Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from the Mavericks, titled Mono. But first, let's talk about comebacks here again. Now, when I said a bit about artists managing to revive their careers thanks to diehard fan bases, critical attention, or simply stepping into the right place at the right time. That happens. One of the reasons that Sleater Kinney's No City to Love did as well as it did this year, on top of just being plain awesome. But here's the thing, Sleater Kinney weren't just a great band, they were responsible for shaping that particular brand of feminist punk rock for years to come. And you could argue that their influence on other people in the genre runs pretty damn deep. But the Mavericks, on the other hand, okay, who was expecting this comeback to work? For those of you who don't know, the Mavericks were a neo-traditional country that came up in the mid-90s that I describe as midway between Alabama and Lone Star. Not quite as rollicking or twangy, but not quite the slick pop country that would define Lone Star's successful years throughout the late 90s and early 2000s. Now, they charted a few modest hits, but they never were massive hit makers or anything that really hit the top 10, or made music that I would describe as essential of the era. Hell, on some of their singles, I'd have a hard time describing them as a true neo-traditional country act, which might have been their real problem getting hits in the first place. They were too polished for most country with the sky-like horns, clean adult contemporary production, Raul Malo's rich baritoner, doofy yacht rock vibe, and tendency for covering Elvis and Cat Stevens. It's no surprise that All You Ever Do Is Bring Me Down is their biggest country hit and the only one that I recognize at all on first listen. And they still still managed to find a way to wedge an accordion solo into it. So after breaking up, I had no real reason to care about the Mavericks, putting them in the same historical footnote that I put similar 90s neo-traditional acts that never really caught on long term. Yeah, I know they won a Grammy, but ask Mark Cohn or Debbie Boone how much those Grammys matter for one's long term career. But then they came back with In Time in 2013, and really it was as if they had never left. The horns, the accordion, the eclectic country, the Mavericks only seemed to really change or evolve in the thicker grooves and picking up more texture, which was a welcome shift, I'll admit that. But despite the waves of critical acclaim that that album got, I was a little bit more lukewarm on it. I mean, I got the old-fashioned flavor to the vocals and the songwriting, but to me it always felt a little bit staged and kitschy. Not bad by any stretch, let me stress this, but just a little bit broad for me. But then again, the band seemed to be committed to pushing their sound even further, so I made sure to check out their newest album, Mono. How is it? Well, it fits into a bit of a weird category, and that's a prime example of a subject that I've wanted to discuss for a while now, and simultaneously not giving me a lot to really talk about. But putting aside all that topic, the album's okay. It's not bad, it's not great, it's a step down from in time for sure, but it's not so much of one that it's unlistenable or a departure in sound. In fact, the best way to describe this album is that it's a vintage Mavericks record. And when I say vintage, I don't just mean that the traditional country draws the eclectic instrumentation of the Mavericks here is present, but that the recording and production of this album is extremely reminiscent of 50s and 60s country and pop, at least before the era of real psychedelia kicked in. It's not so much lo-fi as the mix just has this warm grain to it that reflects analog recording, which makes sense considering they titled the album Mono. And really, that production style doesn't just inform the instrumentation, but everything about the album, from the vocal style of Raul Malo to the songwriting. And if you've got a taste for that brand of traditional country, albeit significantly more horns that recall swing, ska, salsa, even hints of jazz and soul, you'll probably find this record old-fashioned, but very charming, very agreeable, very likable. But when you look past that, start looking beyond what really makes up this album, honestly, there's not a lot here. Let's start with the instrumentation, which is melodic and agreeable, but the lack of thicker grooves, stronger bass lines, or even more distinctive change-ups in their melodies and sound beyond their traditional formula makes some of this record start to really blur together. At least in time went for some more meatier crunch with Latin guitar lines, some real snarl. This this album doesn't really have a lot of that and can make some songs start to run together. Part of this, ironically, is an issue of the production. Simply put, that grainy technique applied to horn lines and other mid-range instruments can mean you lose some of the subtler moments and textures. I mean, it works well enough for accordion and an organ, they came up in that era, but when you have thicker brass, a cleaner recording might have picked it up better. Granted, this album is not subtle across the board, it's not really going for that, but in cultivating the atmosphere can lose the uniqueness between tracks. Not gonna lie here, outside of the, some of the more subtler, quiet moments, a lot of this album really blurs together for me. And sure, it's agreeable, but it's not exactly unique from song to song. It doesn't help matters that the acoustic texture is not as prominent. This is a concern I've had about indie country ever since Sturgill Simpson's metamodern sounds of country music became popular, in that they'd adopt his rougher recording style without picking up the details. And while Dave Cobb's work with Sturgill Simpson, he's a genius there, the thicker reverb and almost smeared over style that comes over here, it doesn't pick up the same pluck or groove, and I gotta admit, that's a real problem. Now this takes us to the vocal 
vocals. And look, Raw Malo is a fantastic singer. Great range, ton of charisma, huge pipes, a liquid smooth delivery. This guy has the sort of old school presence and charm that came from with performers from that era. And I respect him for always including the band in praise that might initially only be directed at him. But you know what? The more I listened through this album, he came across as very broad to me. He's got a lot of power and expression, but not a huge dramatic range, not one that's tested here, which means his songs can be theatrical, but lacking emotive punch, mostly because it is so smooth and powerful. There's little to no grit in his delivery, which sure might fit the style, but doesn't really fit when you have ska, jazz, and swing influences that demand a little bit more smolder, which he doesn't really bring to the table. And you know, all this could have been redeemed if the songwriting was top notch, and it's not. This has been an issue with the Mavericks since the very beginning, I'm sorry, but decades after their heyday, it's still a problem. And it's not that they're bad songwriters, let me stress that, but the songs are just very simply sketched in terms of their lyrics. They're very basic. There's not a lot of details. There's not a lot to the songwriting and the storytelling. The metaphors are very simple, as the pop music was of that time. Yeah, I know. But as such, they don't offer a lot of the complicated framing and more humanizing moments that have come in more modern songwriting, which only makes Raw Malo seem even more broadly sketched. It's easily why the worst song in this album is the dumping track Out the Door, where a bad relationship is being cast aside, probably for good reasons, and yet we're still expected to sympathize with our singer because he's still going to be upset when she leaves. And yeah, sure, while that's very human to feel, it's not played like that with the melancholy or dimension you get from a similar song, let's say Meatloaf's 2 out of 3 ain't bad. This is played too broad and doofy. In fact, Meatloaf is a surprisingly apt comparison with this album. Both he and Raul Malu are big, powerful singers with eclectic instrumentation that calls back to the past, but at his best, Meatloaf had Jim Steinman to add nuance and subversive elements to his songs. The Mavericks, they don't have that, which means a lot of the actual lyricism on this album, which is competently written, and let me stress this, ends up being rather forgettable and cliched and just doesn't make any impact with me whatsoever. In other words, Mono by the Mavericks is a definition of a retro throwback. And not even to the era when the Mavericks had their most success. And you know what? If you like that sound and style of songwriting with a bit of a ska twist, you'll like this album. But I don't think you'll really love it. And that's because beyond effectively replicating that sound, doesn't really do much beyond that. It's broad, it's pretty fun. It probably could have afforded to take itself a little bit less seriously if I'm being honest here, but it doesn't land a lot of impact with me because not only have I heard this done decades ago, I've heard it done better with tighter hooks and writing. Granted, I can see the audience for this album, so while for me it's a 6 out of 10, I'm definitely recommending it if you're a fan of traditional country or even vintage rockabilly or early ska. Otherwise, I can say the same thing about Mono that I can say about every single Mavericks record. You will not hear anything else quite like it, and of that, it's worth a look. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming up that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.